Luke here from Solid State Logic, back with part two of the video user guide for the SSL12 interface. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the software mixer control powering the interface from SSL360. For users brand new to the SSL ecosystem, the 360 application acts as a hub for the SSL12 as well as the UC1 and UFA control surfaces. You can download the SSL360 app from the download section of the SSL website if you haven't already. With the release of the SSL12, there is now a dedicated tab to access all the mixer functionalities of the interface, and now we'll take a look at going through each section of the mixer and explore how to manage routing for different scenarios. Before we dissect the channel strips, we should first orientate ourselves with the mixer layout. When you first open the SSL12 mixer tab, you'll be presented with the mixer layout similar to this. Don't worry if yours looks slightly different, as we'll go through each section, but to begin with, let's look at the View tab on the right hand side. The view options allow us to select which of the available inputs, playback, returns and AUX buses we can view in the mixer window. Selecting an option highlights this in white and the channels will appear in the main mixer window. Not having these channels visible doesn't mean though they are not active, just hidden from our view for ease of navigation. For now let's collapse the mixer view just to the analog inputs and AUX masters. Here we're looking at the analog inputs coming from the four channel strips on the 12, as well as the talkback mic channel. From top to bottom, we have the input signal level meter and three lights indicating if the phantom power, line input switch or high pass filters are engaged. The control of the input signal is coming from the physical gain pot on the input channel strip, but the switches can be controlled directly from the SSL12 mixer or from the interface. Below the metering, we have the headphone A and B sends. The green gain pot indicates the level of the input signal sent to either headphone bus, with an associated mute button per send. The blue pot indicates the pan position of the signal sent to the headphones if the pan mode is engaged from the switch on the left. If the sense pan isn't engaged, then this follows the main channel pan. Below the headphone sends is then the sends to the line outputs 3 and 4, with the send gain pot and mute switches per output. If the outputs are stereo linked, then the first gain send will be replaced by a pan knob accessible via the activated pan switch to the left. If line out 3 and 4 are set to be individual outputs, then the sends will be available in mono. Below the send section then comes the scribble strip, a user editable text field to rename the channels as you require. In their default state, each channel will be named per their type and number, but each can be relabeled, and these settings will be recallable from the profile settings also. Following down from the sends, we reach the output fader section. This section corresponds to the main monitoring path, so note that the fader has no effect on the input signal being routed to your DAW. The pan knob controls the pan position of the input signal going to the main monitor path, and the solo will solo the channel in the main monitors. Inversely, cut will mute the signal from being monitored directly. Finally, at the bottom of each channel is an O button. These signify the channel is currently operating mono, but by clicking this the O will switch to a green link to O, signifying the channel as stereo. These work in odd even pairs and must be sequential, so channels 1 and 2 can be stereo, but not channels 2 and 3. The talkback input channel is exactly the same in regards to the channel routing, but note that the red fader will affect the level sent to the auxiliary buses and isn't routed to the main monitor routes in order to guard against accidental feedback loops. Whilst talking about input channels, we can now take a look at the digital inputs. These channels are fed via the ADAT input and enable the interface to expand the recording channel count to 12 by adding another 8 channels at a sample rate of 44.1 or 48kHz. 4 channels at 88.2 or 96 kHz, down to an additional 2 channels at 176.4 and 192 kHz. The digital inputs follow exactly the same layout as the analog inputs previously covered, except the input signal is controlled via the external ADAT device you have connected. Next we'll have a look at the 4 stereo playback return channels. These allow separate stereo signals to be sent out of your DAW or any program with assignable audio outputs allowing for signals to be distributed to the SSL12's outputs from the mixer. By default, the direct button is engaged and will bypass the routing, sending the signal directly to the designated output channel as numbered in the channel. So playback 1 and 2 will be directly sent to monitors left and right, playback 3 and 4 will be sent to outputs 3 and 4 and so forth. When direct is disengaged, the playback return channel routing acts in the same way as the input channels, so it can be sent to any of the output channels via the mixer. Now let's look at the AUX master section which we briefly saw earlier in the video. The AUX master section comprises of both the headphone outputs and the line 3 and 4 outputs with the fader controlling the output level of these AUXes. 
Although for headphones, you also have the physical headphone monitor level control as a final level, after the fader. When selected, sends post means that all aux sends on that bus are affected by the fader level. The follow mix 1-2 switches the input signal of the aux to the monitor mix, allowing for an easy way to set headphones to follow what you're listening to through your monitors. The AFL, short for After Fade Listen, allows the user to monitor the aux mix on the main monitor outputs, ideal for quickly listening to the artist's headphone mix. Cut mutes the signal from the headphone aux channel and finally mono switches the output to mono, summing both left and right signals together. And finally, on line outputs 3 and 4, the option to make these each mono or stereo is enabled by clicking the O at the bottom of the channel strip. Finally, when looking at the in and out channels, we come to the master out, which is the monitor bus feeding your monitors via outputs 1 and 2. The master fader level will control the output volume in the mixer to the output left and right signal before the physical monitor level control on the SSL12 interface. The monitoring section to the right of this gives further options to the monitor output, with a selection of switches to control the audio signal to your speakers. First we have the dim switch. This engages a pad to the outputs and is derived from the pad level by the knob at the bottom left of this section. Next, the cut switch mutes the signal to the outputs. Mono sums the left and right signals together, and then the polarity L invert switches the left side signal polarity to check phase correlation of your mix. We then have the option to enable an alternative set of monitors. With the ALT speak enabled, this will turn green and then the ALT button will become available to switch in. It's worth noting the ALT speaker should be connected to outputs 3 and 4. Beneath this, we then have ALT speaker trim knob, allowing you to gain match the ALT speakers to your main monitors for A-being sources between them. Below view we come to the user section. This area allows us to control the three switches which are mirrored on the SSL12 interface directly from 360, but we can also reassign these switches for alternative functions from the monitoring section. Simply right click on the name of the button and a pop out window will appear for you to be able to reassign the control to another parameter. When switched, the new control setting will also be triggered by the physical button on the interface. Now let's take a closer look at the control section, where key information in setting up your interface's sample rate and clock settings are found, as well as setting up the 12's loopback feature. The drop-down menu allows the user to select the sample rate that the SSL12 interface will operate at. The selection allows for 44.1 kHz, 48 kHz, 88.2 kHz, 96 kHz, 176.4 kHz and 192 kHz. Just remember that when a DAW is opened, it will override your selection if different. Next, we've got the clock source menu, allowing the change between internal clocking or external clocking via ADAT. When using an external ADAT unit connected to the SSL12, select the source to ADAT, allowing the ADAT connected device to access the clocking source. Next, we come to the loopback source. This option allows us to send audio from any of the available playback streams, AUX buses, monitor bus and AUX masters back into your DAW and record the audio. This is especially useful for recording audio from other applications such as YouTube or from a bus back into your DAW. To set this up, simply select the loopback source channel you wish to record from the drop down menu, then in your DAW select the input channel as loopback as shown here in Pro Tools and record the audio as if you would with any other input channel. Remember to mute the DAW channel though to avoid creating a feedback loop. If when using the 360 mixer and need reminding of a parameters function, we can activate the contextual help by clicking on the question mark icon. When green, your cursor will now activate a tooltip which pops out a window above the controllable parameter with a brief explanation of its function. The solo clear button allows you to quickly clear any active solos in the 12 mixer. When any channels have been put into solo, the solo clear button will illuminate yellow to reference active solos in the mixer. Finally, on this row of selectable options is the settings window, which should be expanded by clicking on this cogwheel. Within the pop-up window, we now have access to a range of parameters regarding the headphone outputs and options for the metering. Let's first look at the headphone settings in more detail. Our first option is to switch the headphones mode and line output mode by simply clicking the selection circle next to the option. We might want to expand the outputs of our mixer to send to another recording device or mixer, so line output mode will be appropriate for this. With the options for unbalanced output, this also makes the output suitable for reamping purposes. When operating in headphones mode, you can now switch between three different options. Standard, which is the default setting and suitable for a wide range of headphones. High sensitivity, this mode is most applicable for use with certain in-ear monitors. 
IEMs, or headphones that specify their performance at 100 decibel milliwatts or higher. And finally, high impedance. This setting is ideal for high impedance headphones which require greater voltage drive to produce the expected output level. Typically, headphones with an impedance of 250 ohms or greater will benefit from this setting. If we move over now to the left hand side of the 360 mixer, we can now see a selectable box to engage I.O. mode. As we can see, by clicking this option, the SSL 360 mixer is disabled and a text box appears describing the fixed routing in this mode. When operating in in and out mode, the playback returns from the DAW are fixed, with playback 1 and 2 being tied to outputs 1 and 2, playback 3 and 4 to outputs 3 and 4, 5 and 6 to headphones A, and finally playback 7 and 8 to headphones B. I.O. mode can be used for several different purposes. First, to simplify the operation of the unit when you do not need the full flexibility of the SSL12 mixer. Secondly, when working at the highest of sample rates, it allows SSL12's outputs to operate at a full 176.4 or 192 kHz, instead of downsampling them. This is important to note as when I.O. mode is not engaged and the SSL12 mixer is active, and you are operating at sample rates of 176.4 or 192 kHz, the SSL12's outputs are automatically downsampled to 88.2 or 96 kHz respectively in order to preserve the full mixing capabilities of the mixer. So if you want end-to-end -end 176.4 or 192 kHz performance, then I.O. mode is a useful option to allow this. Below this we come to the profile section where we can save and recall personal mixer settings dependent on how we want to use the SSL 360 mixer routings. We can easily save, save as and load settings from the three buttons to the left or reset the current setup back to default with the dedicated default option. If this is pressed, a warning box will flash up asking you to confirm your selection though before you can proceed as it will overwrite the current settings. Now we've looked in depth at all the sections of the mixer, let's look at a few of the many ways the mixer can be configured for various scenarios. Let's say you and another musician friend are recording together with one stereo keyboard and a vocal track and the need for two headphone mixes. First, assuming the stereo keyboard is connected to inputs 1 and 2, set the inputs to line and then set the input level via the gain knobs. Being stereo, we want to match the input signal, then let's link the two analogue inputs by clicking the O at the bottom of the channel, linking the controls and making the sends easier. We can then set the level to each headphone mix. Quick tip, we can quickly dial this to zero by shift clicking the gain knob. Next, assuming the vocal mic is plugged into channel 3, we can activate the phantom power if using a condenser mic as well as the high pass filter to reduce any unwanted rumble from the mic. Then adjust the input gain again on the interface looking for an input signal peaking around minus 12 dB to give us some headroom. We can then adjust the headphone send level to each headphone mix according to each person's preference. Whilst we're setting up the headphone sends, let's also add the talkback routing to each headphone mix to allow the keys player to speak to the vocalist without the need for a second vocal mic to be added. Now, when we look at the incoming signal from the input channels, each tailored to the preference of each artist at near zero latency. Now in our DAW, we simply set up the two channels on stereo for the keys and one mono for the vocal and check we're inputting the optimal levels via the gain pots on the 12 interface. Now, if we want to then send a click back to the headphones, we can set up a click track in our DAW like so, then route this back to an output that we can pick up in our playback returns channel which we can then route back to the headphones auxiliary channels in the same way by setting up the send level to each headphone aux. Now we're all set up and ready to hit record with all monitoring routed in the mixer, so now is a good time to save the profile so it's easily recallable for a future session. Say we're looking to record a multi-person podcast, perhaps with the host and a guest in discussion with added intro and outro music. A neat way we can both record and mix the podcast in one go could be to create a submix in the 360 mixer and utilise the loopback feature to capture the entire mix into our DAW, saving on post-production time later. Like the example before, first we need to set up individual mic channels per vocal mic, adding phantom power and adjusting the gain input on the interface, then adding a high pass filter if required. We can then, again, set up each person's headphone mix by sending the input signal from each mic to each headphone aux and adjust the overall level via the mixer fader level. Next, we can organise our playback music tracks to play out via our playback music system, which in this case will be Ableton Live, where for this example we'll set this to line outputs 3 and 4, which will come into the 360 mixer on playback return channels 3 and 4. We can then set up our loopback in 360 to capture not only the music but also set up the mic channels to send to line 3 and 4 also, creating a full submix path that can be recorded back into our primary DAW, which in this case will be Pro Tools. 
Now we're set up, we can trigger the music playback and begin recording our two mic channels simultaneously with a full stereo mix of the session in one pass. Thank you for watching and I hope you found this useful in getting started with your brand new interface. For more information on the SSL12 and any other SSL product, you can find out more at solidstatelogic.com.